This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It's your Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. It's going to be a week that feels like spring. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith. It is Monday, March 7th. And now 630. We are tracking two traffic alerts on I-64 this morning. One of them has part of the interstate shut down in northeastern Kentucky. We'll keep you up to minute on that. Fresh off Super Saturday. Why some Kentuckians will be going to the polls again this week. And UK's boogeyman delivered a special gift to a huge Kentucky fan during a reunion at Rupp Arena. We have the 40s and 50s out there this morning. It's really not a bad start. Maybe a light coat for the kiddos heading off to the bus stop and good looking roadways too, except for that 64 eastbound back toward Moorhead. Afternoon, 68 degrees, beautiful day, and we get much warmer than that. I'll show you how high we go coming up. All right, and we have a lot happening early. We begin with the developing traffic alert this morning. A semi crash has a stretch of I 64 closed. The crash happened in Carter County, west of Olive Hill. I 64 eastbound is shut down. Dispatchers say drivers being diverted to US 60 in Rowan County at the Moorhead exit. Now we're going to take a live look at this uh, scene, the crash scene in Carter County now, and you can see what has happened. Dispatchers say the semi that wrecked was hauling thousands of gallons of propane when it crashed. Crashed into a tree. The driver was not hurt. The propane is not leaking, but they have to be very cautious at that scene, of course, because of any uh, environmental uh, concerns because of that. Uh, a fuel that is on board. There is also a traffic impact in Woodford County this hour. A semi ran off of the road there, sending the driver to the hospital. The interstate is not blocked in Woodford County. Uh, we'll have more on this story coming up shortly. Uh, and uh, we have some other news now. Yeah, big weekend in politics, of course, in <laughs> <Right>. Kentucky, <laughs> with um, everything that happened Saturday with the caucuses. And voting continues tomorrow in four special legislative elections. Today, Kentucky Secretary of State is going to be introducing a bill that could change when you vote. You could go and vote earlier. WKYT's Mark Barber is at our live desk to explain that. Mark, good morning. Good morning. This bill would really change the voting process in Kentucky. Right now, if you want to vote absentee, you have to give the state a reason for why you cannot make it to your polling place. Well, House Bill 290 would throw out the six requirements that the state typically looks for, such as uh, disability or illness, as well as uh, study abroad programs, even military personnel. Now, instead, it would allow people to vote early without giving them a reason. Now, the Secretary of State is working with Tennessee's Secretary of State to pass the bill before the General Assembly ends in April. Tennessee has already passed early voting legislation. There, 25 to 30 percent of voters vote early in presidential preference primaries. Now, if House Bill 290 is adopted in Kentucky, it likely would not be made law until July, so it probably will not affect voters for this upcoming May primary. However, the bill would likely allow people to vote early in the November election. From the live desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, we'll see how it goes as that's debated. Thank you very much, Mark. And this time tomorrow, polls will be open for four special legislative elections that could alter history in the state house. In Scott County, as well as in Owen County and a sliver of Fayette County, Republican Philip Pratt will take on Democrat Chuck Tackett. The winner will replace Ryan Quarles, who won the election last November to become state agriculture commissioner. Republican Daniel Elliott and Democrat Bill Nokler are vying for House District 54 in Boyle County. That seat was left open when Mike Harmon won election as state auditor. Republicans could earn a 50-50 split in the state house if they sweep tomorrow's special elections. Kentucky's state house is the last leg legislative chamber in the South that is still controlled by Democrats. New on WKYT this morning, a report of a stolen purse led police to find two adults passed out in front of three children. The Whitley County Sheriff's Office says Natasha Fox was identified as the theft suspect. When a deputy went to her home, police say a child eventually came to the door and said that they could not wake up Fox. Police say Matthew Watson was also passed out. They found pills and what looked like crystal meth just sitting around in the house. Well, it took all night, but a southern Kentucky road is back open this morning after a semi hauling cantaloupes overturned. The semi crashed into some trees on Kentucky 92 east of Pinot in McCrary County. Dispatchers say crews were concerned that diesel fuel would leak into a nearby creek. That fortunately did not happen. No one was hurt, but it did take eight hours to 
clean up that messy crash and all those cantaloupe. All right, a, a clerk at a central Kentucky gas station is being credited for possibly saving a man's life. Yeah, that clerk broke up an argument that ended with shots being fired. WKYT's Mike Byer is live in Franklin County with reaction from that clerk. A Franklin County man escaped shots fired over the weekend at this BP gas station, all with a little help from the clerk who works here. Now the Franklin County Sheriff's Sheriff tells us the incident happened at this BP on 127 North on Friday evening. This is just a few miles north of Frankfurt. That's when a fight started and the man, a man walked into the store arguing. A couple men walked into the star, store arguing. That's when clerk Alex Steiger stepped in between the two men to break up the argument. Steiger says he grabbed a hold of the person who was causing most of the conflict, giving the other man enough time to get outside and into his vehicle. Thinking the situation was over, Steiger says that's when he heard five to six shots fired at the man who was taking off in his car. The shooter then fled the scene, but not before the clerk was able to give his description and license plate number to deputies. Thankfully, no one was hurt in the shooting. Even while now knowing what happened out in the parking lot and that the man had a gun, Steiger says he would not change how he reacted. Without a doubt, I still would have jumped in, for sure. Now Steiger says investigators told him the fight is potentially related to a heroin bust the sheriff's office made the day before. Live in Franklin County, Mike Byer, WKYT. All right, thanks so much, Mike. A card game at a Lexington business ended early when shots were fired. Police say several people were playing cards in a back room at Prime Cuts Barber Shop on Legends Lane. Two men forced their way through the front door. Both sides exchanged gunfire. Police say no one was hurt and no arrests were made. Time now, 637 here on WKYT. A Scott County bus driver accused of assaulting a five year old has been found not guilty. The Georgetown News graphic reports that a six person jury acquitted 65 year old Durbin Wallace. He was charged with harassment with physical contact. The jury deliberated about 90 minutes before reaching its verdict. A West Virginia boy says the man accused of killing a Kentucky girl last year tried to lure him into a car. Timothy Madden is facing several charges, including rape and murder, for the November death of seven year old Gabriella Doolin. State police say Madden was identified. According to a state police affidavit, Madden was identified as the same man who asked two little boys to get into a car at a West Virginia gas station a month before Doolin was murdered. Well, work is continuing this morning to try to clean up that huge rock slide that has a stretch of I-75 shut down near the Kentucky-Tennessee border. The Tennessee Department of Transportation has hired contractors to remove debris and stabilize the hill. The commissioner says the amount of movement on the hill, though, is still causing some concern. He says the goal is to get the interstate back open as quickly and as safely as possible. You know, I know people don't like detours, and and I don't like them as well. But but safety for our workers is 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 primary at this point in time because we have no traffic. Uh, so they've got to kind of work closely. The 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 mountain's still moving a little bit. Now crews are hoping to have the southbound lanes opened up by March 17th and to have one northbound lane open by March 24th. But work is expected to continue there through mid-April. Obviously a lot of challenges in getting that uh, work completed. One of UK's biggest fans participated in a pretty big reunion. Darren Mosco is known as the UK boogeyman. He's known for his fancy footwork and the love of the Wildcats. Last month, Mosco was dancing with a fan inside Rupp Arena when he took a spill as he was holding her. Saturday night, he and that fan, 10 year old Aubrey Derrickson, reunited for the first time since the fall. Mosco gave Derrickson and her mom matching necklaces. I was worried, but I'm glad I hope found out we were both all right. That's the whole thing. I'm glad that he was okay, though. I was kind of afraid that he wasn't okay. He was breathing pretty hard. Well, after the game against LSU, the pair took a picture together on the floor of Rep Arena. All right. Well, they're both uh, UK fans and fans of each other, it sounds like. Yes. You know? yeah. Well, speaking of the Wildcats, it's now tournament time. It is exciting times. Of course, Kentucky is the two seed in this year's SEC tournament. They'll have a double bye. That means their first game will be Friday night against the winner of the Ole Miss Alabama game. And the favorable bracket puts Kentucky on the opposite side of Texas A&M, LSU, and Vandy. All right, it is 6.39 and time to check live drive traffic this morning, see what's going on. Here's Officer Don. Morning, Don. 
Good morning. We'll start off with a look again at that issue that we're having on I-64 East uh, near Moorhead, where we still have 64 eastbound shut down. Uh, as you can see, the impact that we're dealing with throughout the morning there, and we'll, we'll keep you up to date on that situation. Now, around Lexington, interstate not so bad between the northern and southern splits. The exit ramps all look okay, and the inner and outer loops of the circle, uh, no major problems. There's a stalled car on the exit ramp from New Circle to Chase Creek there on the inner loop, and that's about it. Drive time should be about normal, 13 to 14 minutes coming in from Nicholasville, from Mount Sterling. Uh, we, we're looking okay for now, and it looks like 75 uh, coming in from Scott County, normal stuff across, uh, well, from Scott County and across the Clayseri Ridge from Richmond. Now back to the studio. All right, again, the detour information is that if you are headed eastbound on I-64 this morning, that is toward Ashland to Huntington, uh, you will be taken off the interstate at Moorhead because of that uh, situation. All right, it is uh, coming up on 641, and there's a lot more news coming up on WKYT. One Utah family happy to have their dog back home safe after she was stranded on a frozen lake for days. I'll show you her dramatic rescue still ahead. We got a really good look at start to the day. Afternoon will be just fine, but these temperatures well, well above average. I'll show you how high we go coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Pretty nice start to the day. Cloudy skies are overhead, but other than that, what the clouds do overnight, it's like a blanket over you in the middle of the night. It keeps you warmer uh, than if the clouds weren't around. So temperatures outside in the mid to upper 40s, even some 50s out and about earlier this morning. Kids going off to the bus stop, a light coat will be needed, but once we hit the afternoon, Boy, these temperatures these, this afternoon will be really nice. 50 degrees now in Richmond. When I walked in this morning, we were 46 degrees. 47 now in Lexington. Remember, <laughs> the sun isn't fully above the horizon just yet. That comes at 7 o'clock this morning. And once we approach the afternoon, temperatures really skyrocket. We're talking upper 50s right there around 11 a.m. for maybe going out to the playground, you teachers. Once we hit 1 p.m., it's at 63 degrees. So any time from that 10, 11 a.m. time frame off toward 1, 2 p.m. before the kids go home. If you're wanting to head out to the playground, it'd be just fine, and we will stay dry. Let's talk about your day going off into the evening. We'll finish off mid to upper 60s. It's a good feeling day. It's not even close to the warmest day in our forecast, though. Off towards your evening, heading out to dinner. Any plans you have going on, walk it around the neighborhood. It'll be a pretty good feel, even when the sun does set. Overnight and into tomorrow morning, 40s and 50s, pretty much where we are this morning. Is where we will be tomorrow morning. So, kids going off to the bus stop, you heading off to work, no problems whatsoever. Tuesday afternoon, check out your screen. See a lot of 70s there in the forecast for tomorrow. I mean, this is a good looking forecast. Your seven day looks phenomenal. This will be, feel wise, the best seven day so far this year. There's no doubt about that 100%. Even if you do love winter, trust me, it'll feel good later on this afternoon. So that spring feel, yeah, it holds, on, holds tight for the next seven days at least. After that, I mean, we're still looking 10 to 14 days out. I still don't really see a signal saying, okay, here's a big shot of cold air. For the, for the next several days, we're going to go temperature-wise. We're dry now through Wednesday. I would say Thursday, there's a small chance of rain, but still, for the most part, we're pretty much dry there on Thursday, too. So the next few days look pretty good, but the rain does move in later on, later on being your Friday off towards your weekend. Let's break it down for you. 68 degrees, it gets much warmer the next few days. Look at Thursday at 76. On Thursday, some particular models are reading 79, 80 degrees. Now, I'm not sure it actually gets that high. I'm not sold on that just yet, so that's why I have it down with that small rain chance in the forecast. But then on Friday, 75. Off towards your weekend, Friday through your weekend will be the best chances of rain. And you may see those increase once we get uh, better confidence there in the forecast there Friday and into Saturday. But for now, it looks like your rainy days will be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Your dry days, for the most part, Monday through Thursday. And all of those days, you're talking above 67 degrees for every single one of those days. Good looking weather. I mean, it we is. You really can't beat it this time of year. It's I love it. Great feel. All right, it's about time. Our time this morning, 647. Out in Utah, it was all bark and some frostbite for one family's dog named Sadie. She survived four days and three nights on ice. Her owner, Sherelle Merriweather, called in help. Merriweather's brother tried to save Sadie twice in a canoe, but she would just run away when he got close. Oh, must be a challenge to get her out. And to make matters worse, the ice was melting. 
So the county sheriff's office there stepped in to help. The cell phone video shows the dramatic rescue. You can see Sadie in the water until rescuers pull her out of there. Really amazing stuff. There they go. Mm. Wow. They got her. Awesome stuff. All right. Glad for that little dog. All right, Sadie. <laughs> there you go. Don't do that again. Uh, 647 on WKYT on your Monday morning. We have some more news on the way. Coming up, tributes pour in for influential First Lady Nancy Reagan. Former Secretary of State Colin Powell joins us to share his memories. Plus, we're on the ground in Iraq as Kurdish soldiers battle ISIS. More real news coming up on CBS This Morning, next. Coming up on 651 on WKYT this morning, we have a lot going on yeah. as far as some traffic issues out there this morning. A major traffic alert, a semi hauling thousands of gallons of propane actually crashed this morning in Carter County. The propane is not leaking. The driver was not hurt. But because of the crash, drivers are being forced off I-64 at the Moorhead exit. Cleanup is expected to wrap up shortly. You can always find traffic information and updates on WKYT.com. And over in Woodford County, a tractor trailer ran off of the interstate and crashed onto a road below. Wood Lake Drive runs under I-64. Police say the driver was headed eastbound when he went around a guardrail and somehow crashed down an embankment between the I-64 bridges. The Wood Lake Br Drive is closed right now. The driver has been taken to the hospital. We do not know how he's doing at the moment. Well, at this time tomorrow, polls will be open for four special legislative elections that could alter history in the state house. In Scott County, Republican Philip Pratt will take on Democrat Chuck Tackett. The winner will replace Ryan Quarles, who won the election last November for state agriculture commissioner. Republican Daniel Elliott and Democrat Bill Nolker are vying for House District 54 in Boyle County. The seat was left open when Mike Harmon won the election for state auditor. Well, Republicans could earn a 50-50 split if they sweep tomorrow's special elections. Kentucky's state house is the last legislative chamber in the South, still controlled by Democrats. Well, this afternoon, Kentucky Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes will ask lawmakers to support a bill that would change when you can vote. House Bill 290 would allow people to vote early without giving a reason to vote absentee. Now you have to give the state a reason if you aren't able to make it to your polling place. If House Bill 290 is adopted, it could allow people to vote early in the November presidential election. Well, the country is mourning the loss of former First Lady Nancy Reagan. She's being remembered as a fierce protector of her husband and one who redefined the role of First Lady. Mrs. Reagan died yesterday at her Los Angeles home of congestive heart failure. She was 94. She will be laid to rest beside former President Ronald Reagan at the Reagan Presidential Library and Museum in Simi Valley, California. The Democratic candidates for president turning their attention now to Michigan. Hillary Clinton and Senator Bernie Sanders tangled during a CNN debate last night in Flint, Michigan. The two went head to head on their differences in economic policy. Earlier, Sanders snagged his eighth presidential contest contest win in Maine. On the Republican side, Florida Senator Marco Rubio won all 23 delegates in Puerto Rico. This morning, a football great is preparing to announce his retirement. As John Champion reports, Denver Broncos quarterback Peyton Manning will hold a press conference later today to announce that he is leaving the NFL. Peyton Manning is leaving the game he loves as a champion. After winning Super Bowl 50 last month, he's prepared to enter the next phase of his life. A day after his big win, he admitted to CBS this morning retirement was on his mind. Yeah, I'll certainly talk about it with Ashley and I'll pray about it. Manning's announcement comes after 18 seasons with the NFL. He's league leader in passing yards and touchdown passes. With two Super Bowl wins, it's often said Manning changed the role of quarterback, something even one of his biggest rivals, Tom Brady, acknowledged in a Facebook post Sunday, saying, you changed the game forever and made everyone around you better. Fans agree. It is sad to see one of the sports, like a great quarterback like him go because who knows when someone like that's going to achieve some, you know, what he did. Amid all the triumph, there have been allegations. An Al Jazeera documentary still under review by the NFL alleged a clinic in Indiana sent Manning an illegal performance enhancing drug, something he denies. That the NFL has no choice to investigate it. I get that. But I can tell you what they're going to find, uh, a big fat nothing. It's not clear what Manning's plans are after retirement. Don Champion, CBS News. Well, Manning is tied with Brett Favre for the most <laughs> regular season wins. I can't ever say his name correctly. <laughs> Brett Favre. 
His Super Bowl 50 win was his 14th in the postseason. Well, what a career for Peyton Manning. We'll see what he does next, certainly. 6.55 is the time on WKYT.com. We have Micah's spring-like forecast, and it looks good for most of this week. And all the latest news, of course. I-64 closed in Carter County due to that semi-crash. Eastbound traffic being detoured this morning at Moorhead. We'll stay on top of that inconvenience early for a lot of Monday travelers. The nation remembering Nancy Reagan, who died over the weekend at age 94. We've pulled up some archive information and video. And it's on our website of her 1984 visit to Lexington just before her husband was reelected president. And speaking of elections, you'll find all of the results of the Kentucky Republican Presidential Caucus on our website. Donald Trump carried Kentucky, but he was closely followed by Ted Cruz. Now we have an interactive map so that you can see how the candidates performed in each county. Over on Kentucky.com, UK coach John Calipari's son Brad is becoming a wildcat. He He'll walk on as a member of the team next season. Controversy in Berea, where the mayor there says before he gives city money for this year's Spoonbread Festival, he wants assurances that no merchandise featuring the Confederate flag will be sold at the event. The Richmond Register has that. CBS This Morning, coming up with your eye opener and our local updates. Join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter or Instagram, and for the latest, WKYT.com. Just want to keep you in mind about that wreck over there on I-64 eastbound, mile marker 136 there. It, it's the Moorhead exit. Just keep that in mind as they're having a detour around town. Here's the look later on this afternoon. We'll be right around 68 degrees, guys. Really good looking day in store. 70s the next several days. Excellent. You gotta love it. Love it. Get that patio furniture ready. That's right. Nobody's more up to date than you. Thank you for being with WKYT.